right, I'm here with two beautiful S&M ATF bikes. And uh, I wanted to talk about a problem that's plagued me for a decade. <clears throat> and that's uh, finding out what chainstay length frame to buy. For years, I've, I've had my uh, axle damn near falling out the dropouts, or I've actually had to cut the dropout to actually slam the wheel. <clears throat> and part of that is just because I've never, when I was younger, I wasn't able to afford, you know, $40 half link chains. I was just running $10 Walmart chains that were always stretched out and shitty. And, you know, I had to keep plenty of room in the back to slide the chain over the sprocket to change a tube because I didn't own a chain breaker. <laughs> but anyways, I'll get into it. <clears throat> So a good way to measure how, you know, tall or, or short gearing gearing is, is to figure out the rollout inches. Um, in, in my case, I, I like uh, 60 inches of rollout for a 20 inch wheel. <clears throat> the way you get that number is you take the amount of teeth on your sprocket and divide it by the amount of teeth on your, on your rear cog, which in my case is 27, nine. And so 27 divided by nine is three. Then what you do is you take that three to one ratio and you times it by the height of your rear wheel, which in my case is 20 inch. So three times 20 uh, is 60 inches of rollout. Pretty simple. Then on this guy, I've got 30, 11. So 30 divided by 11 is I think 2.727. Um, and then 2.727 times 22. I want to say it's like 59.999, but basically 60 inch rollout. So these, the 20 and the 22 have the same uh, gearing essentially. Now on the 22, I have a half link chain. And on this one, I don't have to have a half link chain. So I'm gonna show you this mathematical equation I came up with to figure out um, basically how the gear ratio relates to chain stay length and whether or not you have to run a half link. Let me show you. So for years and years, I've tried to figure this out. I, I've gone online and done like calculators and they never work worth a damn. I mean, I know Fit Bike Co has some chain stay length and gearing listings under some of their frames, but frankly, some of them are just wrong. They're just incorrect. So I, I just want to go over this with you because it's this is how you know for sure. And this is the only way I've found to know for sure what what change day length you're gonna run with a given gear ratio and whether or not you have to use a half link. So for the uh, start of the equation, you're gonna take the amount of teeth in your sprocket and add it to the amount of teeth in your driver and then divide that by two. And I'll show you why. All right, I'm down here by the bike. So I'm just gonna to explain to you real quick the first part of that equation and why we do it. So what we're figuring out is how many links are enveloped by the sprocket. So the reason we divide it in half is what we're measuring is the contact that the chain has with the sprocket. So from here back is gonna be chain stay length. But from the center of the sprocket, is uh, is just gonna be enveloped in the sprocket and it's not gonna add to your chain stay length. So that's why we add this and the driver and then divide it by two, is we're, tr we're trying to figure out what, how much of the chain goes towards chain stay length and how much of the chain just goes towards contact with the sprocket. And since I'm such a nice guy, I've actually already gone and done the math on a lot of common gearings. As a matter of fact, I think I've ran every single one except for those two. I've ran a lot of different gear ratios. But yeah, if you see yours on there, great. If not, do the math, it's pretty easy. So you'll notice that some of these um, have a decimal and some of them do not have a decimal. Um, if your if your equation has a decimal if it has that 0.5 at the end then you're going to fall into the 13 and an 8 13 3 eighths wait um I'm, I'm sorry 13 and an eighth 13 and 3 eighths 13 and 5 eighths or 13 and 7 eighths and then if uh 
<clears throat> if your first equation doesn't have a decimal, your chain stay length is going to fall under one of these quarter inch categories. 13 even, 13 and a quarter, 13 and a half, or 13 three quarters. And then, of course, this, this continues on. This could continue on to 14 inch, 14 and a quarter, and so on. Or under, for that matter. Now what you're going to do, depending on whether there's a decimal or not on this first equation, is you're going to take one of these numbers and times it by 4. All right? So I'll get you an example. So let's say, for example, I'm running 28.9. This has a decimal at the end. So that's going to put me in the category of these chain stay lengths. 13 and an eighth, 13 three eighths, 13 five eighths, or 13 seven eighths. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick which, I'm just going to pick one of them. Let's say 13.625, which is 13 five eighths. I'm actually going to times this by four. All right. Uh, let me do the math on that real quick. So 13.625 times four is uh, 54.5. Um, and let me go back to the bikes and I'm going to show you why we times this by four. All right. So here's why we times this by four is because what we're, what we were measuring previously is inches. Now, each one of these links is, is a half inch. So we do, we divide it by two to take it from, uh, one, one inch to a half inch, which shows us links instead of inches. But the reason we divide it in two again, divide it by four is because this chain has two sides. So if I were to add an inch into this chain, it would actually only increase the chain stay length by a half inch because it goes around. Uh, it would, if you put an inch in it, it would even out and then the chain stay would only get an inch longer. So like I said, what we do is we take the measurement of the chain stay from this point to this point and we times it by four to make up for the links being a half inch and to make up for the fact that it's double sided and uh, that gives us our distance that's not enveloped by the sprocket from here to here. All right, so now we know how many links are allocated towards the chainstay length and how many links are allocated towards gripping the sprocket. We can actually add 18.5 to 54.5 which honestly, I'm under too much pressure with this camera to do in my head, but let me get right back to you. So I used the calculator, the uh, 54.5 plus 18.5 equals 73. Okay, so here is where we find out if we have to use a half link or not. A half link, um, well, you a half link you can do any length, but with a non-half link, you can only do even numbers of links. So since 73 is an odd, odd number, we're forced to use a half link, all right? So if you don't wanna use a half link, what we can do is these alternate. This is the size you have to use a half link. You don't have to use a half link. Have to use a half link, don't have to use a half link. With that gear ratio, th th this com changes completely depending on that, on that gear ratio. So you, it's not like, it's not like this is apl applicable to anything that has different gearing. This is specifically for 28.9. Um, and like I said, there's almost no rhyme or reason to it. Um, let me just give you the rundown again. Sprocket teeth plus driver teeth divided by two equals X. And then uh, chain stay length times four equals Y. Y plus X equals amount of links needed. And like I said, even, even numbers you don't have to use a half link odd numbers you have to use a half link um and yeah that's that's pretty much it all right so now you found a gear ratio you like a chain stay length that you like and found out if you have to run a half link or not there's one more well a few more things i want to talk about the pitch of this chain obviously it gets bigger to smaller that's going to shorten the chain stay the effective chain stay length as compared to the theoretical chain stay length probably a few thousandths of an inch but unless like you're running like 26 9 
like Dylan Lewis or something, it's probably not going to throw off your measurement uh, that crazy. Like I said, it might just be a few thousandths of an inch. Uh, and I know I'll never be manly enough to run gearing like that. So likely you're not going to have to worry about that. The other thing I was going to talk about is chain stretch over time, especially half link chains, because the metal um, has an angle to it. It tends to straighten out versus a chain like this where the metal is already straight. Uh, they don't tend to stretch as much. Um, so that that's going to affect your uh, your measurement too. But you're not going to have to worry about it with a brand new chain like this. And then the third thing I wanted to mention was, like I talked about earlier, when you're changing your tire, sometimes it's nice to be able to slam this dropout just a little bit, just enough to get your chain off the sprocket. Um, and that way you don't have to break out a chain breaker or bust a master link just to change a tube. That's a pain in the ass. So for, for that purpose, I recommend about a tenth of an inch. In this case, I'm running a 14.1 chainstay frame, and this chainstay is set at 14.125. So I only have 25 thousandths to slam this, and I cannot get it off the sprocket without a chain breaker. Versus this one... I have um, a 13.4 chainstay with the chainstay set at 13.5. So that 100 thousandths gives me enough room to slam that dropout and get it off the chainstay or get the chain off the chain ring without, without it falling out the end of the dropout and looking shitty and sliding all over you. So yeah, that's, that's something else to think about. Um, I think you could get away with probably 75 thousandths but yeah i would recommend about a tenth of an inch to be able to get your chain off the sprocket without too much trouble and look i know i'm ocd as hell and probably on the autism spectrum but this is something that took me 10 years to figure out so i hope it's useful to you and if you think i'm just a little bitch that's overthinking stuff go run your chain stay falling out the dropouts go run your loose shitty slappy chain I don't give a damn. I just know I'm going to be dialed over here. So good luck. <laughs>